Hi, this is Dr. Dan Ratner. As part of our how-to series, we are going to look at how to recognize when you are carrying what is called, in some circles, cognitive load. This is essentially when things weigh heavily on you in one form or another, despite no clear and obvious external responsibility. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and I'll get back to you personally. People often talk about stress as the cause of many physical conditions, but what they're usually referring to is things that are happening in the external world. So a very tough job or job setup or, you know, the time frame in which you're working, a breakup, trouble with your kids, time crunch in general. All of these things come in from the outside world and they do cause stress. There's no question. But one thing that I've tried to let people know about in terms of how to think about mind-body issues is that it's not so much the stress from the outside that really determines whether you're going to have symptoms in response to that. It's the experience you have inside. But today I'm going to talk about something else entirely. This is something that is called cognitive load. And what that means is the things that we carry on inside of ourselves even when nothing is happening externally. Whatever the setup is, is fitting into our way of understanding ourselves and our way of feeling about ourselves in a way that leaves us with a burden. So there's also this load we carry just inside ourselves. What I want to do is talk about how that plays out in each column so that you can learn how to put that load down as best you can and as often as possible. And the first step is very similar to the first step in anything that we talk about. The first thing you need to do is realize that there's something going on of which you were not aware. So often, we are actually carrying a burden that we did not realize. So let me define this a little more clearly. What is cognitive load? Cognitive load is whenever you are having to work harder than you would be if the circumstances were different. Now, I said it's not about outside circumstances. I'm talking about subtle circumstances. I'm not talking about big events. I'm talking about things like somebody brings up a topic you didn't want to think about, and suddenly you're spinning in it. That's cognitive load. It's kind of like in a, a computer. When it's processing too much, it's got too much load. Uh, it makes me think of the, the Beatles song. I'm a huge Beatles fan, and the song Carry That Weight. Boy, you're going to carry that weight a long time. Every time I hear that, I, I didn't quite put it in cognitive load terms. It's a term that I came across just recently, in fact, was in a session today. And that term kind of hit on the representation of something I had understood that we can be made to work inside ourselves more than we want to or should be from interactions or ways of thinking about things. Society puts cognitive load on us. So I'm going to give you some examples so you know what I'm talking about. When your significant other won't apologize to you, or goes to bed angry, you might be left carrying some extra cognitive load. In fact, most people would be. Or when someone's insensitive to a worry that you have. So I have a phobia that I've talked about, and a lot of times people who know about the phobia casually mention uh, the idea of throwing up or something like that. Suddenly, I'm carrying more of a load. I'm suddenly thinking about something I didn't want to be thinking about. All because of a throwaway comment. I'm not saying that the other people are doing something wrong, just pointing out I recognize, okay, now I'm carrying an extra burden. And we have to figure out how to deal with those extra burdens, recognize them and deal with them. Having lists upon lists of things to do where you are, let's say, the default parent, the one that, you know, the the kids would go to about a particular thing in one setting or another. You carry this weight even if nothing's actually happening because you're on duty. It's It's the possibility of having more responsibility to carry that is cognitive load. It doesn't have to be happening right then. Leadership roles, parenting, supporting a significant other when they're depressed or anxious, these are things that provide a lot of cognitive load even when things are fine. When you're interacting, let's say, with a depressed significant other, maybe they're happy that day. That's great. But you might be walking around with the cognitive load of what if it turns? What if it goes bad? That's a load that you're carrying that's invisible and not even happening but it's still weighing on you quite heavily and affecting you. Being unappreciated adds to cognitive load. Uh, this is a real pet peeve of mine, and I try to teach my daughters not to do this. Other people making you work harder than them, or they're not taking responsibility for something and leaving it on your hands. Uh, in this community that I'm talking to, 
you're usually on the receiving end of this. We have a very hardworking community that is more likely to take on responsibility and maybe too much. But other people are, not not like all other people, but a lot of other people are handing over responsibilities or just not taking responsibility, and then somebody has to do it. It's kind of like if there's litter on the ground. Who's going to pick it up? Well, if you don't, somebody has to. And it's that way psychologically speaking. People being unempathic to you not only sucks just from how bad it feels, but now you have to deal with the added burden that they've brought to you by them bringing you a bad feeling. It actually, I mean, look, this is this is particular to me. Some people, they, they think teasing is really funny. I don't. I think teasing is not funny at all. It's at the expense of the other person. They can't laugh with you, and it gives them a cognitive load. Why is that good? Indirect aggression. I had a, a video on indirect aggression and uh, how, how toxic and hard it is. That is a cognitive load that you bring to people when you act that way or somebody acts the way to you, they're bringing it to you. So let's look at the different columns and how they are affected by the idea of cognitive load. In the emotions column, we've got, let's say, those 6 to 12 themes. As we know, that number could vary. But I'm just trying to put a ballpark estimate on it so that you know you know, what's a little too little to be accurate and, or, or to really capture it and what's too much to be too overwhelming. But those themes that you've built can help you identify just where you're more likely to have that cognitive load buildup. People can try to make you work in all kinds of areas, but if it doesn't hit you at your, at your heart, it's not going to add nearly as much load. So high stakes things tend to add a lot more cognitive load. But this is an important point. Very small things within those themes can heap enormous cognitive load on you. If you felt, uh, if you felt, let's say, disrespected in your childhood or not seen, and then you didn't feel seen in some small way, that's not small. That's a huge cognitive load on you. It's a, it's a, a, a mini confirmation of the very thing that you did not want to see and you suffered most at the hands of. So cognitive load, it can be particularly hard because these are hardships that are not visible to other people necessarily. And in a way that leads to its own cognitive load because we start to question, should I even be upset about this? Yes, you should. Trust your feelings inside. If you are feeling overworked, there's a reason. Sometimes people are making you work too hard or a situation is making you work too hard or maybe you're taking on responsibility that you can actually set down. Feeling critical of our themes or of feeling uh, a load from something others might not find burdensome, that adds to cognitive load too. That's what happens when people go on Facebook. Everybody goes on Facebook and they leave with a cognitive load because they look over here and they're like, oh, this person's doing this and oh, their relationship is like this and suddenly we are burdened with things from things that aren't even happening. But inside ourselves, we've got a lot of weight to carry. Here's a couple of examples of how this plays out in the emotions column that you'll need to think about. So we might, uh, let's say you're a neat freak. Some people are, uh, and they may insult themselves as being really anal about it. But really, maybe they're just the ones holding the cognitive load of how messy the house is. I'm not like that. It doesn't bother me if the house is messy. But for my wife, it does. And I think she carries a cognitive load. And I need to be aware of that because otherwise, my priorities not being aligned with hers can add to a cognitive load. And of course, she can do that in the opposite direction much of the time. Like when I'm playing guitar and I want it to be appreciated that I'm, I'm playing this song and she gets nervous about it and doesn't really want to talk about it. Well, then I'm carrying a cognitive load. And so is she, by the, for that matter. A lot of times we are just carrying these extra indirect and invisible weights around with us. Here's another example. We insult ourselves as being selfish for wanting more than our share when really we were deprived of things. And this is why we want things. So cognitive load can add to a sense of being burdened uh, and wanting compensation. And if we interpret that wrongly, then we're just carrying even more load inside. And that, that's what this negative self-talk loop can do. It just keeps adding to the burden. Here's another example. We say that we are being lazy 
We criticize, we criticize ourselves for being lazy when we are carrying the cognitive burden. Uh, this is a mind-body one. Of having to figure out what is wrong with ourselves in our mind-body experience when the very people who should be helping us either aren't helping or aren't helping well enough. And instead of recognizing our anger and frustration with that, we carry the cognitive load of maybe I just don't work hard enough. That is not true for anybody. You would work hard if you understood why it was going to help. You're not going to do that work for, for a, a program or a person or a setup. That doesn't even make that much sense to you. So what do we do about cognitive load? And we're going to look at each column and what to do about it. One of the most important things is to recognize how serious it is to carry all of that weight. In any given day, you're carrying around a huge amount of weight just from these invisible burdens that only you know about and only you would know about because it all relate, you know, relates to how you experience the world. So you need to work on not criticizing yourself for that. We're all overburdened with people asking us to carry extra weight as if it is nothing. That's not fair. It's not fair to you that people ask you that. And we need to think about that, uh, you know, in a community to not hand those burdens to each other, but also to not accept them from, from each other. All that, all those expectations and criticisms. It can even happen with something as simple as, did you like this movie? Um, we don't all need to like the same movies. So it, here's a way to set down a burden. Recognize that. And no, you don't have to carry the weight of defending your favorite movie. <laughs> These are the kind of things that can really burden people. So don't accept attempts to hand you indirect aggression. That's a burden. Another thing you need to do, step up the self-care. Now, whenever I talk about self-care, I'm very careful about this because I find it's getting misused a lot these days. So you have to remember, this does not have to alienate anyone. You do not need to see others as standing in the way of your self-care. If that's happening, you're on the wrong path. You can do self-care without anyone getting hurt or bothered or without having to shut anybody down. So don't see others as the enemy. Instead, just focus on giving yourself something that you wouldn't normally give yourself. That self-care takes away burden. You want to use the emotional themes that you've come up with to stay aware of where extra cognitive load could be coming in, and you have to communicate about it. If you're not ashamed of it, it's much easier to communicate. So here's an example. With my phobia, I mentioned before, my wife doesn't realize that offhanded comments sometimes, like she might just say, I really don't feel well. Boom, I'm in it. I'm, I'm off in phobia land. And then I ask okay, well, what's bothering you? And she says, oh, I just have a sore throat. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry, I have a sore throat. But suddenly it doesn't bother me so much. By communicating, I get some of that cognitive load off. But I do sometimes wish that she would realize that and recognize that's not a small cognitive load for me. That offhanded comment could weigh me down for the entire day or, or a week. So it's all, it all depends on what it means to us. So we want to try to be a little more predictable and thoughtful for other people. Uh, it's funny to say that to a bunch of goodies because you're so thoughtful. But you want to be thoughtful about those kind of throwaway comments and whether they are adding to cognitive load. But most importantly, you need to look out for the ones that, that get you going. You are not responsible for everybody else. You'll do your best. But we do need to look out for each other, and we can all do better. Here is a huge one in terms of cognitive load. When you go to see a mind-body uh, practitioner and they say, I'm 99% sure you have TMS, we've talked about or mind-body issues, we've talked about the fact that most people just hear you, I'm 1% not sure. But what that what is that? That's actually cognitive load. Why would we do that, you know, to cover some kind of liability? It's a huge load to give to somebody to say when we actually are 100% sure. Oh, I'm 99% sure. Well, that's really great, but you just handed some some big heavy burden to somebody and you didn't have to do it okay let's talk about the doubt column so doubts are one of the biggest forms of cognitive load you're carrying around fear unanswered questions confusion that lack of certainty that's all heavy and you carry it with you everywhere you go and it is one thing that i'm kind of trying to um, take the mind body community to task about is we have to do better 
to get you answers or else we are handing you that burden. Now, it's also the case that we can't take it all from you. You have to do your work of getting your system down, but we have to give you something really good to do that. To challenge doubt is to give yourself the gift of working to set down invisible cognitive load. Every time you conquer a doubt, you're caring less. It's less burdensome. One of the reasons I became powerful uh, in, in the wake of getting better is I put down all those doubts. So listening to society about these things when they aren't mind-body or trauma-informed is an added burden you do not need. We need to start saying, we're not going to listen to those people who don't actually know the basics of this. That's true for the quote-unquote experts. If they don't even know the basics, we don't need to even entertain what they're saying. We can treat them like four-year-olds trying to create a suspension bridge. They don't know how to do it. And this all will reduce the load that you carry. Deciding for yourself based on logic is a way to free yourself from cognitive load. <clears throat> I recently did a, a testimonial with Sophia. That's one of the things we talked about. She got free of that cognitive load. I, we hadn't talked about it in those terms, but that's what was happening. Viewing yourself as less curable than others, by the way, that's a weight to carry. It's not only inaccurate, but it's a weight to carry. You're suddenly walking around thinking, I'm worse than other people. So recognizing that you actually know more about this than nearly everyone in the world means this is one area where you don't have to doubt yourself. This is an area where you can be far more certain and far more powerful and have far less cognitive load. You don't need to carry around this weight. You can have certainty. All of those shades of gray discussions that people have, they're great in some ways, but they also bring a lot of weight to bear. We have to carry around the question, am I right about this? Did I miss something? What about perspective? I just want to keep highlighting this to help you see how much of the time we start to uh, carry a burden that we could set down. With respect to the power column, I often talk about the the clash that people can feel wanting to remain a goodist, which is good, uh, with being able to address your needs and be powerful. So what I say about this is you can still be a goodist because of your principles, but the way you can set down the burden some of that is to not need to be a goodist to everyone all the time. Instead, you could... You could kind of sort out who you feel deserves that the most or gets the top priority because it's a load to carry to take responsibility for others. And you want to use it, I'd say, m more sparingly than goodists tend to do. I'm still very good to lots and lots of people, but I'm not going to be good to people who are completely not good to me and not good to other people. Instead, I'm going to try to get them on the path to good, but I'm not going to have to work that hard at it because... That's their job. So here's another way to put down a burden in the power column. Recognizing how everyone is on their own journey. You might be feeling bad about something that isn't even real. It, it may not relate to what they actually feel. Like if you're feeling bad for somebody and they might be feeling fine inside. So let others have their journey and focus on yours. Use your core narrative to recognize that we all have cognitive burden uh, where some people might not. Where we Being different is just built into our DNA. You don't have to be the same as everyone else. In fact, one of the reasons my system is useful is it can deal with many different ways of operating, and you can find your system within it. We don't have to stack up to others because they did not know our stories. We know our stories. They don't know. Put down that burden. That's, that's cognitive load, walking around thinking, I've got to prove this to other people. No, you don't. It doesn't matter if, if not a single person believes you about your story. I'm not saying that's ideal, but you could put down the burden and say, I still am right. I don't need to try to convince them anymore. Being fiercely in your own corner, that involves putting down as much cognitive load as possible. Here's an example. When you're raising kids and they're in school, and you check out their grades, and you think that their grades are a reflection on you. No, that's, that's a cognitive load burden you're carrying around. You don't need to do that. Because the reality is, 
most people's kids are doing just fine. They can go to a good school. There's tons of good schools. You don't need to think about it that way. Weight issues in society are another another huge uh, weight that we carry. Um, there's expectations about weight. Why? It doesn't actually make sense. I'm not saying I haven't had those thoughts also because of how society has pushed things on us, but you can fight through that. You can put down that burden. Um, there's a lot of expectations we have with with people in a variety of ways that that expectation carries a lot of weight altogether. And a lot of these issues are just the inability to put down the cognitive load and like whatever there is to like about what is. You don't have to fight everything all the time or try to necessarily make it better. If you like it, you can like it. If you don't like it, you can work at changing that. But you don't have to take on the responsibility of what it means. That's cognitive load. So in all three columns, the internal load we carry is the key to whether we can find relief. Learn to identify it, recognize when it's happening, counter it, and put it down. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below and I will get back to you personally.